y'all, Scott here. Nothing makes the blind more uncomfortable than a good old-fashioned game of charades. Let's go on eBay and look for a stack of Game Boy Advance games. I mean, what else is eBay meant for? Ah, you see, this one includes Mario Kart Super Circuit. This one has Mario Kart Super Circuit. Here's a lot with Mario Kart Super Circuit. Oh, hey, Bionicle, and Mario Kart Super Circuit. From this, I can tell Mario Kart Super Circuit's a really popular game that absolutely nobody wants. Yes, the very first portable Mario Kart title. You could play the first two games on the go, but that was a mess. Plus, there was a rumor back in the day that supposedly a Mario Kart for the Virtual Boy was in development. The only proof of this is some German magazine listing it as in the works. And by in the works, they meant possibly never was in the works, and if it was in the works, thank god they put this game out of its misery. Even if a Virtual Boy Mario Kart released, this would have still been the first truly handheld Mario Kart. It was always incredibly exciting to see what once was a home console exclusive series make the jump to a portable. To be able to play Mario Kart wherever you want, that was a huge deal. This was the first Mario Kart title I owned myself, and I played this like crazy on road trips, and I lost it at my uncle's house. That was a rough patch of my career as a six-year-old. But regardless of losing it, I always retain some great memories of this title, it had a certain charm with the graphics and music that always resonated with me. To be honest, this was the Mario Kart of my childhood. Mario Kart Super Circuit, also known as They Keep Getting Smaller, came soon after the launch of the Game Boy Advance in 2001, and they definitely waited for the right time to actually put Mario Kart on a handheld. And in my opinion, this game made the Game Boy Advance look competent as all hell. It was originally titled Mario Kart Advance, which turned out to be the final name in Japan, and it was developed by Intelligent Systems, a developer well known for WarioWare, Paper Mario, Advance Wars, and that one series all those Smash Brothers characters came from. This was the only Mario Kart they ever developed. I don't know why they specifically made this one. I assume it was because Nintendo themselves were busy with other games at the time, but who knows. Yeah, there's just not a lot of background to this one. It's a Mario Kart that came out. Well, that's one point for Super Circuit. Oh, this is a close one. Super Circuit's the Mario Kart game everybody forgets about, the one, in my opinion, that impacted the series the least. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's just the best worst Mario Kart. It's obviously not something I'd actively want to play in comparison to, you know, most other Mario Karts, but it's still a decent game. I think it gives Super Mario Kart a run for its money if that means anything to you. But does it deserve to be the highest rated Mario Kart of all time on Metacritic? Now I think more people have fond memories of Mario Kart DS in comparison to this one. A DS was such a monumental game in the series, introducing so much that would become staples of the franchise. Well, Super Circuit's just kinda Mario Kart for Game Boy Advance and not much else. I actually never owned Mario Kart DS in its heyday, but obviously I did own Mario Kart Super Circuit, yeah I'm one of those guys. These games are comparable just because they were the first two portable Mario Karts, and I think it's fair to say they represent two very different eras of the series, even though they were only released four years apart. DS has that chaotic, wacky fun of the modern games, while Super Circuit is far closer to the more skill-based gameplay of Super Mario Kart. And by more skill-based, I mean you can't just barf out a bullet bill and go wee. The computer players cheat here, you have to deal with it and play better than them. Alright, enough done. Let's see why nobody cares about this game anymore. Title screen wise. I like this. Mario Kart wise. It's Mario Kart. It uses 2D tracks just like Super Mario Kart, but features the same character roster from Mario Kart 64, including a good majority of the same items with no new items introduced. Very similar character sprites to 64, uh, the same character voices from that game are reused as well, except we finally get some new Yoshi action. This is just taking Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64 and making them do unthinkable things to each other, turning out, in my opinion, the most forgettable entry in the series. It's strange though, see it's obviously one of the least original Mario Karts, but it weirdly has a lot of its own style. The music is definitely unique compared to the other kart games, and I really like it for that. And with the visuals, while the sprites are based off of Mario Kart 64, as a whole it has some spunk. Seeing these characters all pixelated yet rotate around like they're fully 3D is oddly charming. The tracks have art associated with them, and it's just an interesting looking game overall, even with all of its limitations. However, since this is very similar style-wise to Super Mario Kart, we get a lot of the same problems here. It's hard to see things in the distance or judge where you are in relation to the environment. Sometimes I'm yelling, what do you mean I fell here. And then I realized, oh, the game can't hear me. Nintendo has customer support for a reason. Now, you see, following up Mario Kart 64, the developers obviously had a tough problem to overcome. How do they make this game more fun than its predecessor? You see, that's where they really innovated. They just didn't. While this one was definitely more interesting to go back and play, 
I just had more fun with Mario Kart 64. Plus, the fact this game didn't really introduce anything major to the series kind of makes it a Mario Kart that just kind of happened. It just took the past two games, mixed them together, and blam. It's really weird. It feels like Super Mario Kart. It looks like Super Mario Kart. But various elements are taken from Mario Kart 64, and certain parts feel like that game as well. While a bit of 64's more arcadey feel is present here, this is definitely most similar to the first game. And that's evident by one major returning element. While the feather item didn't return from Super Mario Kart, Intelligent Systems made sure to bring back a fan favorite. COINS ARE BACK, BITCHES! Finally, it's been so long since I haven't cared about coins in a Mario Kart game. Just like with Super, they're all over the track and collecting them increases your top speed, but man, when you have zero or one coin left, this game just loves letting you know with a persistent beeping. And it happens a lot. Other racers give me love taps all the time, which makes you lose coins. For God's sakes, this feels like bumper cars. Now with the characters, like I said, it's just Mario Kart 64's roster. I stand corrected. There's one new addition to the roster. Random. I would love to see the item box be a playable racer someday. Now with this game, all the character stats are displayed. I personally go with Vanilla, Mario, and Luigi. All the other characters are too lightweight, too slow, or too Yoshi. I just found the most success with these guys. I like that they got Rare to provide Donkey Kong's model for this game. I like the thought of Intelligence systems trying to make it themselves. We just can't do it. The game controls. It, it controls fine. It's not like the greatest feeling in the world, but it's not bad. I think the best way to describe it is it, it probably controls exactly how you'd expect it to. You look at a sprite-based racing game like this, you control on a Game Boy Advance, like, yeah, you probably get it. It's not gonna be the greatest, but it's tolerable, it works, it's fine for what it is. It's just nothing that I go, man, I want to control this. Drifting still isn't my favorite thing to do here once again. I find it more beneficial to not drift half the time. Yep, it's official, I'm certified worthless. Now one characteristic of Super Circuit I obviously have to commend. It has 40 f***ing tracks. Jesus Christ, they really pulled out all the stops with this one. Not only do they have 20 new tracks made specifically for this game, but you can unlock all 20 of the tracks from Super Mario Kart. And look, they're actually full screen this time. Bringing back an assortment of retro tracks has been a staple of the series since Mario Kart DS, but it technically initially started with this game. I have to give them props. The GBA loved itself some remakes and ports. They definitely could have just ported Super Mario Kart to the system and call it a day, but no. The remake of Super Mario Kart was just a bonus you got for playing through the new game, which was a fully featured original Mario Kart. They didn't have to bring over the SNES tracks, so this is really cool. Now unlocking the tracks is what some Scots playing Super Circuit right now would consider a pain. Yeah, you have the first four cups unlocked from the get-go. Oh, wait, first four? Ah oh, yes, the Lightning Cup! Yeah, I haven't seen that one before. This would eventually be relegated to one of the four retro track cups from Mario Kart DS onward, but Intelligent Systems maintain they weren't making a Mario Kart game if they weren't putting the Lightning Cup in there. So you have to play through all four cups, you get gold by placing first overall in each of them. Then the Special Cup unlocks, and you can play the final cup in the game, just kidding! Now you have to go back and complete all the cups again, but now collecting at least 100 coins overall. And that way, you unlock the extra cups, which are filled with the tracks from Super Mario Kart. Man, measles are sounding pretty good right now. Now, whichever engine class you complete this in, the tracks you unlock don't transfer over to the other ones. I unlocked the Special Cup in 100cc, I still have to unlock it in 50 and 150cc. I tried 150cc and did okay, but then I said f*** it, I love being a wuss, we're going 100. This isn't a difficult game, it's just harder to pick up and play compared to the modern stuff. It retains that classic Mario Kart balancing from Super Mario Kart in 64. If you're in the nosebleeds all the way back in 8th place, you have to actually be skilled enough to make your way back up the pack. It's not super hard, but you just can't bank on getting a super overpowered item to bring you up the ranks. CPUs rarely attack with items and they primarily just get speed increases, keeping them on your tail consistently. But hey, some of the new tracks here can be pretty neat, we got the first Mario Kart track in history with rats. Ribbon Road, Yoshi Desert, I love the music of Snowland, but similarly to Super Mario Kart, we get a lot of repeated track themes. And I love Bowser Castle so much, I want six more, thank god. Yeah, that works against this game in my opinion. It makes a lot of the cups feel repetitive when so many have a Bowser Castle, have a standard circuit course, there's two coast tracks. And then with all the Super Mario Kart tracks, it's like, man, here's four Mario Circuits from that game. Plus, a lot of the themes of the new tracks are themes from Super Mario Kart. So while, yeah, it's cool this game has so many tracks, you get a lot of repeats. Couple that with the 2D designs, the fact that most of the backgrounds are just sort of there. There's not a ton of major gimmicks, and that makes none of these tracks really stand out too much. None of them I necessarily thought of as bad, it's just they're all really average. Nothing was overwhelmingly cool or great, but they got the job done. Nothing too memorable, but nothing too bad. Now Mario Kart ain't Mario Kart without multiplayer, so I'm gonna whip out the Wii U Virtual Concert release to play with some controllers, why would I ever think that was gonna be possible? Bust out your GBA link cables because we're playing the definition of local multiplayer. Yeah, it's... it works. 
You only need one copy of the game, which is nice, but only using one game cartridge limits you to only four courses you can play on and forcing everybody to play as Yoshi. If you want a fuller experience, as in being able to race on whichever course you want, being able to play as whichever character you want, or play battle mode, get multiple copies of the game. What, do you think this was a charity? There's time trials, which I care about. Yeah, right. And then there's quick run, which is just playing whatever course you want to that you have unlocked just for a quick run. I have a lot of memories with Mario Kart Super Circuit, but it's very obvious to me why this one is very rarely brought of nowadays. It's an interesting blend of the two games before it, but it isn't much more than that. Plus, Mario Kart is most well known for its multiplayer, and this is easily one of the most difficult games to get that going on. All the console entries, you just need multiple controllers. The DS and 3DS games, you just need one copy of the game and multiple systems. Super Circuit, you need one copy of the game, multiple systems, and link cables. And if you don't like playing basically a trial version of the game with your friends, even if you own a full copy, they need to have their own copies so you can play on all the courses or play battle mode. It's definitely quality, but it's also not a necessary game to play today, or a necessary one to look back on. It didn't bring much to the series, but it has decent, albeit forgettable track design, and the fact that it brought Mario Kart on road trips for me, will always give it a special place in my heart. So yeah, my love for this game is purely nostalgic. Looking at it critically, it's fine, it's just nothing special. So now I have to compare it to something else that I'm nostalgic over. So how does Mario Kart Super Circuit compare to Classroom Jeopardy? Yeah, it f***ing stinks.